Welcome to The Witcher Lorecast, the show that explores the vast lore behind The Witcher games, show, and books. Witchers, welcome back to The Witcher Lorecast. This is the show that covers everything having to do with the universe of The Witcher. I am your host, Tom, or Robots, and I am back with my good buddy, Toaster. Mm Hmm? What do you think about that one? That's it? Yeah, just to- you're no longer Toasty or any other <coughs> surname after that. You're just Toaster. Okay. Pregnant you pause. Know, uh, we is- all come here for uh, you to come up with some crazy long nickname at the start. And, you know, I feel like you failed. No, I've, I've completely changed the game now because you were the thing that was toasted. And now you're the thing that does the toasting. The dynamic has completely flipped all by just changing a few little letters at the end of your name. It's a lot of power wielded with just a few little letters. But anyway, we are here to talk about another episode of the Witcher series on Netflix because we're very quickly approaching season two. We recently recapped in a very long episode, season one and or not season one, episode one, and episode two. And so we are just recapping episode three today. Betrayer Moon. Betrayer Moon. I feel like you have to say the names in really cool uh, voices in order to make them sound even cooler than they are. Because, you know, you just gotta, you gotta match the coolness with the sound of the names. Toasty, Toaster is just nodding his head here. So, how you doing, buddy? How you, have you been? Okay. It's been, it's He's, been a week. It's, it's been, been a week. week. It's been a week. Yeah, so, it's been a week. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I watched this again uh, a few days ago with my wife and have been enjoying the season immensely because it's been since it came out that I've watched it. And uh, have you been re- recapping these recently as well? So I'm recapping them right now. I know, but like Maybe. rewatching them again, has it been like since they came out or do you regularly watch these over and over and over again? Are you just, are you the kind of guy that just kind of keeps these up in the background every day? Are you that guy? No, to, are you no, that guy? Not that guy. Not I've, that guy? I think I've rewatched it like one other time since it came out. And then like occasionally I, I've seen episode one a lot mm-hmm. because I try and like show people. Mm. Mm. And, and episode one's real good anyways. So, you know, it's just rewatch it a lot. So, yeah, I got you. I got you. Well, why don't we get right in? Because this is the topic of the show and it's going to take a bit because there's a lot of detail in this episode. So where do we start, Toasty? Or I mean, er, Toast, er. He's just you're just totally not on board with this. <laughs> like it's hard to do a podcast when you just make faces I, at me and then I just have to fill in the audio gaps. <laughs> I I can't I can't I can't. Like, you know why? Because I was I was it for people that are watching the live thing. You can see my full my full name here. Uh-huh. So thin and toasted. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm pointing at my thing, which is probably not showing up right there. But anyways, um, mm-hmm. it's so thin and toasted. Usually shortened to like. Thana or toasted and so i was toast or toasted for a long time mm-hmm. and then whenever i got on this like started interacting with this community they changed it to toasty and i embraced it i was like okay fine i can do toasty mm-hmm. i i you can't change it again on me i, mean, I, just, I, I already have I an just identity you here. fanny what what you see that's you trying to change my identity though all that's right that's the thing i have an identity here can i call this you is Sotha? a horrible way to start a podcast let's about, be honest okay Sotha? um <laughs> <laughs> all right i'll just go back to toasty we're, we're just we've already lost all of our listeners all right so yep, where, where do we start bye. they're all gone bye bye listeners we're just going to talk to ourselves here so where do we start with this episode all right so i wanted to split them up because there's primarily just the two Mm storylines we get like a siri thing right at the very end for like a minute so yeah i figured we'd do Geralt and then yennefer and just split them up rather than going back and forth because there's a lot of scenes later in the episode where it's cutting back and forth between Geralt really fast right right be doing that so that's a good idea so we're starting with Geralt. we're starting with Geralt. Mm -hmm. so we start the episode we got a a dying boy giving us a little bit of an exposition on uh, what exactly is going on with with 
what the monster is talking yeah. about like curses and and births and stuff um big old claws slash through his chest oh yeah he's he's real messed up and then we we see him tell him there's like a mysterious figure he steps out and it is a, a mysterious dark-haired witcher um and we actually know the name of this guy i don't think they ever say it but we still know who he is his name is ramus um he's listed in like the school of the wolf members so it's it's i don't know why he just shows up to die because uh then we see him <laughs> going into a like a slaughterhouse there's hanging meat and stuff it's spooky mm-hmm. and kind of foggy it kind of looks like there. a supernatural episode have you yeah, ever watched yeah, supernatural as, as someone as someone who's seen every single episode of supernatural some of them like three four five six seven times and, uh-huh. yeah it totally yeah. looks like a like oh they're in a spooky place it's, it's like of... season one supernatural yeah though. yeah they, they stopped doing that after season one <laughs> season one supernatural had all those like tropey stuff in it right right yeah totally so so we see him uh he's he's looking around there's like a, a, a thing moving around fast we don't know what's going on and then he he gets got he gets got he did mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. <laughs> And then we we get to Geralt. He wakes up with a with a with a prostitute, so whatever you want yeah. to call her. Yeah. She's she's tracing his scars and singing uh-huh. Yaskier songs uh-huh. that relate to those scars. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. And she's and obviously can... a big fan of Yaskier. Yeah, we can tell by this point in uh, Geralt's history that uh, his marketing campaign has been very effective. Oh yeah, it definitely has. So uh, she's doing that, and then the the dude, uh, or she talks about. Um, there's like a witcher that came through uh, a little bit ago on his way to Vitsima for a contract, um, and that the rumor has it that he took the money and he ran mm-hmm. um, rather than taking care of the monster. And Carol's really disturbed by this. This is so. like the one thing that she says that actually piques his interest. He's totally bored with her for all of this. Uh, everything she's saying, he's just like, huh? Uh, he's uh, probably listening because apparently he stayed three days with this woman. Uh-huh. Right. He spent three days in a, like a brothel right. with this woman. Um, and then, you know, the the owner is in demanding money apparently Geralt didn't have any money so <laughs> yeah. i don't know why he was doing this in the first place and he has to leave roach with the owner as like collateral yeah for- well i think what they're establishing here is that uh, like we're at the point in the season and in the storyline where he he hasn't yet found his meaning his destiny i think that's what they're establishing in the show is that he's just kind of going through the motions. He's he's lived a long life already. He's fought a lot of monsters. He's he's now he's met Yaskier, right? And he's like the marketing campaign has worked. He's ga- he's gained a little bit more fame. He's gained a little bit more money. He's spent a little bit more money and he's still like his life is life. He's just kind of doing his thing. He doesn't really have any meaning yet. And Fair that's enough. where he's at, right? And, and and that's and that's what we're seeing here. It doesn't it doesn't matter. He's just kind of doing his thing, and the world just kind of sucks anyway. That's kind of where he's at here. I mean, that's just the way of the witch, right? But that but like you can tell that he's like just kind of mired in it. Fair. Um, so then we we cut to a scene where there's some miners. They're all having like a little like group meeting talking about um how they're being mistreated and that that was the same way nilfgaard was a while ago um but the usurper came along and set everything right and that maybe they should follow in that example and usurp Foltest in order to to have a, a better time um and then Geralt's kind of he's just he's sitting on a like a box in right. the corner just right. listening to everything yeah. and he's like 
He was like, yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, tell me about this monster contract. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how that, uh, how's that going to work out for you guys? You think that's gonna, really going to be a good He's idea? Like, yeah, think? probably going to yeah. die, by the way, just yeah. so you know. But also, what, <laughs> what's up with this Witcher thing going, this rumor? Um, and obviously, they're not having it because the rumor has it. The other Witcher took the money and ran. So they're like, mm-hmm. we don't want anything to do with you because we've already been cheated by your kind once. Right. Um, and, and he has a really smart retort to this. He's like, I don't charge up front. I only charge when the job is done a third of the cost and I don't I don't get paid unless I do it. And he's like, well, what if you don't do it? And he's like, well, then I die. And then the guy mm-hmm. looks at his buddy. He's like, oh, well, all right. <laughs> like he said, he says it's an apology from my guild to yours. Right, right. Like <laughs> business to business, businessman to businessman. I'm going to make it right. And they, they understand that talk and they're like, oh, OK, <laughs> like totally makes up for it in like two sentences. So then Ostrich and his men show up, break up the meeting. You, you're not, this is kind of the situation where you're not supposed to be having group meetings like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's probably against the law. Um, and the miners are angry. Obviously that one guy lost his, that, that guy at the beginning is like his brother or something. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. He's, um, he lo- seems like family. Yeah. And, Ostrid is trying to show like sympathy. Like, you know, he says, he says McCall was a good boy. Uh, and the miner looks like he's going to accept it for a moment. And then he's just like, get this hand off me and spits at his feet. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. all of the guards are like, yeah, you want us to kill him? You ready? Yeah. We ready to die. Okay. All right. right. And right. But which is Ostrid, a running theme in this episode. The guards are just ready to just tackle anybody who lifts a finger against anybody. Yeah, yeah. So, but he ostrich still throwing. It was ostrich. My bad. Ostrich. Sorry, if I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna say ostrich a lot this this podcast. But we'll just call, we'll just call yeah, he's like, he's just like, you know, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Like he's upset. It makes sense. And uh, then, he, and so far, and so far, he seems like a totally nice dude. Yeah, like, this is the beginning of us going. Oh, seems like a level headed dude. All right seems pretty nice seems and pretty nice. Then he tells he tells uh the guards to escort Geralt out of town we've had enough witchers mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. because you know the rumor is going around um and so we get to Geralt he's he's being escorted out of town uh like flanked by like four different um horsemen and then we just see these four guys just slump right off their horses into the snow <laughs> right Right. And Geralt's like, um, what? And then we turn around and see that, uh, for, see Triss Marigold for the first time. Mm-hmm. And, Geralt, and Geralt figures out what's going on really quick. He's like, come out of the shadows, witch. Right. And then sorceress, sorceress, witch. But, but, but like, <laughs> he's basically like onto it. Right. And then, and then he's like, he figures it out. And he's like, ah, the old send him out of the town and then send your, send your sorceress out to go get him and bring him back in the middle of night trick. <laughs> Whose idea was that? It seems like parlor tricks for a king. And she was like, that was my trick. <laughs> that was my idea. It was just, I just thought it was funny. His insistence on calling her a witch for some reason. <laughs> Cause he's like, yeah. come out of the shadows, witch. And she's like, I'm a sorceress. And he's like, a witch. And it was like, Carol, relax. Okay, relax. <laughs> right, right. So, um, yeah, Trist wants him to lift the curse um, on the monster rather than killing it. Geralt's like, you can't lift the curse on a Vukadlak. Um, and she's like, well, good thing it's not a Vukadlak then. Um, mm-hmm. and basically, they don't know exactly what it is yet. So she takes him to uh, to see that or the dead bodies kind of like look yeah. over them. And they're that's all in when salt, he's- which is a cool detail because that would have been how they kept the bodies from decaying was by yeah, just like dries them out. Right. Yeah. Covering them in salt, which mm-hmm. I mean, they couldn't have frozen the bodies that you know, they, they had no way of refrigerating the bodies unless they stuck them in the snow or something. But even I mean, that they could have done that. It was really cold outside. Yeah. But even that who eventually would have gotten wet and then the, the moisture would have decayed the bodies. Um, even, you know, like had the snow even melted and then refrozen and melted and refrozen, it wouldn't have been good or animals would have come and eaten the bodies. So they had to put them in a, in a place where they could have kept them safe from the animals, covered them with stone slabs and then covered them in salt, which makes a lot of sense. 
Hmm. So this is when Geralt realizes, you know, he sees the the dead Witcher, um, member of his his guild, and he's he's like, you let them believe that he ran away with the money so as not to scare like the populace. Basically, this monster bested a Witcher, and he didn't want to tell anyone because that would make it even worse. Right. If a Witcher can't take care of it, uh oh, what are we gonna do? You know, right? So right. And he goes, he goes digging around in, in his abdomen, in his chest cavity, mm-hmm. and finds that the heart and the liver are missing, and that there's only one kind of monster that's that picky of an ear, so it has to be a Striga. Yeah, this is, the, uh, <laughs> this is the part that makes you think of like every Law & Order episode. You know, like, ah, yeah. this is the one thing that leads us to believe that this is the answer here. Yeah, but yeah, he needed he needed his sunglasses to take off in that situation. You exactly. Know? Right. So, right. With that yep. that little one line quip. No. Yeah. So we have the whole full test situation next, which I want to kind of jump through pretty quickly because this whole situation basically amounts to he gets an audience with full test who is eating his dinner and they're talking and it's mostly Geralt talking with the the guards and ostrich. Right yeah and trying to convince them that hey we need to go do this thing which they don't want him to go do and Geralt is reading fault test this whole time trying to gauge his reactions to understand what's actually going on and mm-hmm. seems to believe that fault test might actually be the father of the princess in this in this situation yep so it's it's a really cool scene just because Geralt seems exactly to know how to push his buttons in this situation, because first he starts giving really vivid descriptions of how the monster is like born essentially. Right. And it's like, you know, get out of my, get out of my room. Cause it it was really bad. Uh, Geralt throws the guards out, locks the door and tries to talk to him one-on-one and is insinuating that, Foltis is the father and Foltis is like, I won't have this. You're slandering me. And then guards come in and they're ready to kill him. The guard, the, of course, another situation, the guards yeah. are ready to kill. Right. Um, so he's told to leave to Maria and they're like, we don't want you here get out. Yeah. Um, and this is part for the course with Geralt is that he just <clears throat> is like super casual with every leader he ever deals with. Like it phases him in no way that this is a king or an emperor or a powerful wizard or anybody. It doesn't matter to him. He just doesn't care. You know, he's just going to call it like he thinks it is and just tell him what he thinks. And that's it. It just does. He just doesn't care. I mean, he really doesn't need to though. Like yeah. one, he's supposed to be pretending like he has no emotions. So why, right. Why should he care anyways? He has no emotions. I shouldn't, but also but he's not like, even careful. You need me like right. you, right. sir, you need me to do this. I don't care how I speak to you because you're not going to kill me because you need me to do this for you. Right. Yeah. And he does this over and over and over again. And it's just, it's so ballsy. Oh yeah. But it's good. Yeah. It's nice. It's awesome. Uh, So we, we come back, Geralt's waiting outside the abandoned castle. Um, and, there's guards out front. They look really like spooked. They're just hearing <laughs> yes. like the creaking of the castle and stuff. Right. It's they're not, not even monster good... sounds. It's just the creaking of the old building. And they're just like, yeah. like shaking in their boots. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. They're not having fun. Geralt's hiding around a bush, staking out the place, trying to figure out how to get in. Uh, and Triss kind of comes up, confronts him about asking him like, why do you care so much about this situation to which Geralt's, He's really dodging the question too. Like she's like, "Why do you care so much?" And he's like, "Uh, why do you?" Yeah. <laughs> Just throw it back at her. He doesn't want to answer this question. Right. Um, right. And they basically come to a consensus together, and she's like, "Well, how are you supposed to even get in, anyways?" Gil and- throws a rock. Right. And the guards are gone. The the guards are gone. Now, <laughs> at this point, we understand something about why he cares about the situation. This mm-hmm. is this is basically his guilt for what happened for with Renfrey. And that's like this whole episode for Geralt is yeah. a bunch of Renfrey guilt. Right. Right. So, and so they get in there, they're investigating um Geralt or Triss finds letters uh that point to the Queen Mother Sancia, who's like Foltis and 
Ada's mother mm-hmm. um, and saying like basically pr- saying that she killed or not. She killed. Sorry. She cursed uh, her daughter because she didn't approve of her and Faltus incestuous relationship. Yeah. <laughs> so she's like, yeah, my, my kids are, are, are acting inappropriately. I'm going to put a curse on them. It seems a little extreme mm-hmm. for the situation. Mm-hmm. Like, like, I don't like this. So I'm going to do something that probably will result in them dying or worse. Who knows? In this situation, it was worse. Um, and we also get a little part of Geralt kind of contemplating the bed. Um, yeah. And you can hear, you can like hear him like sniffing. He's like sniffing around or inhaling deeply. And he's just looking down at this bed uh, and kind of contemplating it. And then we go to Tris, Geralt, and then Ostrit. They're talking to Ostrit about, you know, this situation. Why would why would Sansia curse her children? And he you know, seems like a good guy. He's like, I he seemed, don't know, you know, everything's happened. Me, 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 me. Yeah. And and yeah. Geralt's Geralt's really playing along in the situation. He's the thing, and he Ostrit said something. He was like, Okay, that makes sense, you know. Except there's one thing. There's mm-hmm. like a one problem with this situation and what you're saying. And he kind of like, uh, you know, approaches him slowly and like puts his, his mouth right next to his ear and says like, I could smell your scent. I could smell what you were doing on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I that'll... smell your, I smelled your <laughs> scents. Well, like this is like the later part that was pretty bad, but it uh-huh. was like, he first says, I smelled your scent on her sheets, old ones, and new ones uh-huh. and then he says he gets real close and he says i could smell what you were doing yes <laughs> and whoa, whoa, whoa. this this completely whoa. breaks ostrich he's he he telling her or telling Geralt's, you know like i loved her um Foltis spoiled her like so he put a curse on Foltis, um which apparently transferred over through an intimate act probably or something like that somehow mm-hmm. his curse transferred over to Ada and it just doubled with you know the queen mother with, with Sansia's or who knows what happens in that situation sure, sure. but um, it comes down to it was Ostrid's fault it was All Ostrid, of this is yeah. Ostrid's fault so uh then later we, we cut to like a Yennefer part for a while here and then we go back to Geralt um, and he's going to the abandoned castle at nighttime. The guards are, there's like a ton of guards standing outside it. Um, and they're being real, like aggressive again, ready to just kill somebody. Of course. These guards, I guess they, they have one desire in life and it's just to kill people. And I guess they're pretty <laughs> starved on it. Cause they're just like, so ready. Yeah. Um, and then Fultus comes like, kind of like, moving through the crowd he's decked out he's got like armor on and stuff he's ready too he, yeah it's like it's like they're all ready. just ready to go to war yeah which i guess in this situation they're standing outside the abandoned castle at nighttime when the strig is supposed to awaken so they're probably like you know like oh we need extra protection because just for some case. reason we're being real stupid and we're going to confront the witcher outside of the abandoned castle mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense mm-hmm. um and they basically have kind of like a heart to heart in this situation where like Foltis is trying to figure out like why Geralt is insisting on reversing the curse. Like any other witcher would just kill it. And Geralt's like actually determined to try and reverse the curse. And we kind of get more of this insight of Geralt, you know, like I failed a princess once too. He's real guilty about the Renfrey stuff. Mm -hmm. And even gives Foltis Renfrey's brooch to yeah. give to the princess after she's c- cured. Right. Um, which is a detail I hadn't noticed before, actually. And I never noticed what it was yeah. that it was. I, I assumed it was supposed to be like, you know, like a sapphire with an inclusion. Cause you know, that's how you like fight the curse or whatever, after you've already reversed it kind of thing. So mm-hmm. I didn't realize it was actually the brooch. It was really cool. Yeah. And so Fultus leaves, Geralt goes inside. Ostrid is tied up to the bed um, and Geralt's trying to get answers out of him. Like, what did you do for this curse? Like, how did you implement it? Um, apparently he 
uh like slaughtered a lamb at like midnight right and bathed, bathed in the in blood, blood until until dawn and he was like dawn Ugh. and then that's yeah. when he realized like oh i'm gonna have to fight this thing until dawn like because the incantation had something to do with the way to reverse the incantation is at least what i gathered from that he he did it he did it until the roaster the roaster the rooster, the rooster crowed three times right uh, that's when the the ritual he was able to stop the ritual which means he has to do it Geralt has to keep it from going back into its crypt until the rooster crows three times yes so right. um basically he drinks a potion he gets himself ready he leaves Ostrid. Right. who's freaking out and we get to see that and the he has, has a no no <laughs> no qualms about leaving ostrid out as the bait ostrid's like oh, okay you just tell me and he's like no <laughs> he's basically yeah. he's just like no you're you're basically you're gonna reap what you sowed like yeah sorry, sorry and this is like a strategy as well mm -hmm. the this is the striga's eating somebody there's like that's more time that the striga's not in the crypt so he's like all right well ostrich bait so he's tied to the bed he's freaking out obviously he's being loud so the striga's like going right for him yeah and, so, it, and it creates a really really i don't know just creepy entrance scene for it's the like striga from the ceiling right. and, and then... the first thing you see is the umbilical cord drop down did you notice that yeah yeah, yeah that that, that's the, the first thing you see is, the, is you see like a, a like a line drop down behind ostrid and like like the first time you watch you don't necessarily notice what that is but then oh, i know it was an umbilical cord yeah. i was like oh god that's yeah. gross yeah you're <laughs> like oh that's an umbilical cord and then yeah because it was never properly removed and it like and then yeah it's a wonderful entrance to the striga and how terrifying the striga is and then eventually of course the striga slaughters him and then of course Geralt shows up right and then he's got a brilliant idea he's like i've got a silver chain i'm gonna you know bind the striga I, I think that that was like the sense you get at the beginning of the fight is that like yeah. he's got a plan he's got okay the striga's got a full belly he's gonna approach the striga he's gonna bind it with the chain maybe he can use that to kind of you know keep the striga bound for a while and you know and he does that and then the striga is just really strong and it breaks yeah. the chain yeah and, and, and we the get, expression is <laughs> we we get the we get the iconic henry cavill Geralt's fuck before he just right. gets walloped You're right by this thing and so then we see tossed around like a doll yeah so we see we see a long fight scene this thing's fast it's agile Geralt's really having to like work overtime we see him like blast it down the hall with ard we see him break the floor with ard mm -hmm. um to try and like keep it from like getting to him um and then at one point this is like the cool thing the design of these is so sick he he straight punches the striga in the face with like silver knuckles right but they're like a wolf's head knuckles so he like does that um and then it gets to the point where don's sort of right like the sun's coming up a little bit um and the striga's freaking out it's like i gotta get back in and so we get this little chase against each other. Geralt just shoulders it out of the way, dives into the the sarcophagus, the tomb, right, and right. seals it with with Yerdin mm -hmm. and like locks himself in there. So then basically he just has to wait it out. And just, yeah. I know, love how smart succeeded. this is. He doesn't like close it and try to lock it and keep himself out where he has to continue fighting it because by this point he's he's exhausted he's like wounded and exhausted and by the end of the scene when he, even when he comes out and they have that final you know uh, she's turned back into a girl but she's still feral and takes a bite out of him and he takes a bite out of her and then like there's still and then he kind of passes out like you can tell how exhausted he is after and laying in that crypt until until the you know the sun finally is up and the crows three you know the rooster so, crows three times like in this one it's it's because it's like tv and like some things you just can't do like you can't explain right so like in the book for this situation like a, like the chain and the knuckle or i don't even know if the knuckles are a thing but the chain is um and like the fighting and stuff is described but then it's described later on that Geralt like intimidates it like he scares the striga away during this fight and then just casually strolls to the tomb and locks himself in in the book yeah but that would be obviously as adventurous you can't do that in the tv show yeah 
Yeah, and no one would understand that. He would like try to scare it away, and they'd be like, "Why is this scared of him? That doesn't make any sense." Um, right. But right. so it's it's very yeah. This is very like more high octane situation. So he he comes out of the tomb later on. It's daylight. The sun's shining in. He looks rough. Um, and then yeah. we see this little girl on the floor. She's like covered in blood. Hair is all ratty. Clothes are, or she's like naked. I yeah. think. Well, yeah, she, she, um, she was a stranger. She wasn't wearing any clothes. Yeah. yeah. So she, she just looks really like terrified and scared. And Geralt's trying to like calm her down. You know, tell her that she's he's like a friend or something. Uh, and then she just kind of like whips out these like massive claws because her nails are so long mm-hmm. and ragged. Um, and she just like gashes Geralt's across the face and then like bites his neck. Um, and he, he like returns and like bites her neck as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and she runs off or she's like cowering in the corner and he's just kind of like bleeding out kind of what it looks like. Yeah. Um, yeah. cause she ripped a giant chunk out of his neck. Um, and, then later on, he's having like a dream of Renfrey. You hear like Renfrey talking again, like my saying more prophecy stuff. And he wakes up and even says her name because he thinks it's her, but it's just Triss. And basically has a talk about, I want my money. Um, and this is when Triss kind of tells him like, you know, you got to really like, you need to follow your destiny and gives him the money pouch. And it has Renfrey's brooch in it. Right. So he right. got it back. Yeah. She asked him um, a few questions, but he was very guarded about it. He didn't want, yeah, he didn't want to talk. She's like, what are you, who's Renfrey? And he's just like, I am not telling you about Renfrey. <laughs> yeah, basically <laughs> I didn't. do not know you well enough right. for this situation. Right. Just shut up and give me my money. Right. So, but, you know, typical, typical Tris manner. She's, she's there and supportive and, you know, helps him out in the end and make sure he gets out. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, everything kind of wraps up pretty well for, for Geralt at the end of that, even though it, it was pretty shaky there at, at the end. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, that, that was Geralt's po- portion of the episode. Um, we've got to take a break and thank our patrons. And we've got a review to read out as well. So stay tuned for that. And then we'll be back with the Yennefer section, which is pretty intense as well. So stay tuned. Very well. Let us get this over with. Something has infested my vineyard. Mm-hmm. Great. Let me go prepare my something oil then. All right, this is the part of the show where we get to thank our patrons, and we have a brand new patron, a tier four patron. Sebastian has signed up. Sebastian, welcome to the Patreon. Thank you for supporting the show. Toasty and I appreciate it. And um, did we thank uh, Rank Rankar as well? Yeah, Rankar is new Ro- as well. Ro- yeah, yeah, Ron Ronkar. Ronkar. Ronkar as well. So two new patrons this week. Welcome to both of you. Holy moly. We're only two weeks away from, is it two weeks? Yeah, two weeks on the 30th, because this month ends on the 30th. So actually the 29th, uh, we're doing this on Tuesday night because oh, I had to just happened today. Yeah, this I just was, happened today. I yeah. This morning, I did not see Sebastian. Sebastian signed up earlier to wow yeah just today okay. so uh yeah we would have missed it had we done the episode yesterday my my brain decided to try to kill me again with a migraine so we pushed the episode back to tuesday night which is currently right now so um the patron episode will be on the 29th assuming that my brain doesn't try to kill me so we'll see you guys all the tier four patrons on the 29th and we've been talking on the discord about what to potentially talk about with our patrons i think we should talk about some of our predictions for season two I, 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 we have a sense if you've read the books where season two is probably going, but of course they might change some things with the TV series and we don't know how far they're going to go into the season and what things they will uncover. And I think it would be fun to kind of discuss what we think they're going to do with season two before it actually comes out because this is their last chance to do so. So if you want to talk about that, or if you have some other ideas, please chime in on the Patreon and thank you to all of our patrons. You guys are absolutely the best all 11 of you now 11 11 patrons that's Toasty. five leshen patrons five right? leshens i don't know how we're oh gonna fight God. off of five we leshens. went from one to five we're, we're gonna, one to wow. five this is crazy okay you guys <laughs> are nuts crazy. this is amazing and then also we got a new a new review from pomey boy pomey boy that's a Poem-y good name boy in the u.s who writes Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Five stars. This podcast is pretty cool and informative. Got into The Witcher because of the game and then the Netflix show. I really want to read the book, but 
never find the time. Uh, try the audio version of the book if ever you feel like you need more time and you're like, I was going to do that. Like if you, because it seems like you're listening to podcasts. Yeah, because obviously you're listening to us. Mm-hmm. So um, they're they're usually pretty cheap. Like or you get like a digital library. Those normally yeah. have audiobooks.com. Like, there. uh, there's there's links to audiobooks.com on some of the episodes. I've shared some of the links that that we have because they're oh, one of our three free audio. Yeah, you get three free audiobooks right. audiobooks on there. So uh, look look through some of the episodes where I've shared some of our free links for audiobooks uh, because they're one of our our sponsors. So go check that out. Um, but anyway, they go on to say with this podcast, I can get much better insight into the lore and story of the world of the Witcher. Also, I like the chemistry of the host, the high energy of Tom and the calmer toasty work really well together. Recommend for anyone who's into all things the Witcher. Well, thank you, Pomey boy. And I appreciate it. So um, if you want to help, what was that? Toasty? I think that's funny because I feel like I am kind of high energy, but my voice is so low that it doesn't seem like that at all. Whenever w- the thing that you feel like you're projecting, this is something I've learned from doing podcasting for a while now. The thing that you feel like you're projecting and when you say things is never the thing that it feels like when you listen back. So you always have to like do more than it feels like when you're doing it, uh, if that's what you're going for. So, yeah, there's times where I feel like I'm projecting energy and then I listen back and I'm like, man, I sound real chill. <laughs> so, yeah, you kind of have to overperform because well, people can't apparently see i'm you. the chill guy so i should just stay that way yeah you're the chill guy yeah maybe we should swap sometime you should be like the energy guy and i can just be chill no? i don't know if i know how to do that okay well all right um but thank you everybody for your support and to all of our patrons and by the way if you've have ever considered joining the patreon just go to patreon.com slash witcher lorecast and if we've helped you get through your work day or your workout or your drive to work or you know Stitching. using salt to preserve oh your dead bodies yeah if yeah sometimes that takes a while so if you've been working on preserving your dead bodies while listening to our podcast then you might want to consider getting those episodes a day early or you know avoiding those ads or maybe even joining us at the end of the month so go check that out and um also thank you for the review and that really really does help and you know what even just telling your friends about the podcast is absolutely the best thing you could possibly do so thank you to everybody who helps us out and let's move on with the rest of the show you smell of death and destiny heroics and heartbreak it's onion right yeah Man, it is a good thing that we divided this into one episode instead of two episodes and did Geralt and Yennefer. We'd be just dancing back and forth. Um, yeah, it would have been real weird. That's why I did. It. I was like, this also makes for a good w- mid break. So yes, can- <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're going to have to burn through this or this is going to be another hour and a half long episode. So it won't be that long. We could do this in 20 ish minutes. We can do it. So, so we anyways, go back to we- Yennefer. Okay. And we got me and Yennefer in a weird, hey. a weird doing it scene with Istrid. Yeah, they're, they're doing it in an Our audience. Istrid what? are doing it with an audience. And it's like, why is there an audience there? And then they all it's clap. It's actually just, she just conjured an audience. Apparently mm-hmm. that's her thing. So she conjured these people. Um, and I think it's supposed to be the applause happens after they oh, yes. like oh, yes. climax. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, like, good show. Good show. Uh, Yes. It's it's pretty funny. Um, so they're getting dressed after this, uh, and they're talking about what they're going to do after Yin's initiation because uh, it's been you, you know, years. She's finished training. She's ready to like ascend on to like a full sorceress to go to court. Um, and she's Istrid's talking about how he's going to go like he's going to like research some ruins or something. Yeah, he wants to go explore uh, ruins and you know see the world and stuff. Yeah, because um, in The Witcher, the magic stuff is really closely related to science stuff. Mm -hmm. So, like, the fact that he's going to go study ruins, he's he's also, like, he's a sorcerer and an archaeologist, which makes a lot of sense um, with how they do these things. And Yin is set to go to Adern to serve King uh, Virfarel, I think it's how it's pronounced, um, because he likes uh, his court sorceresses to be from his kingdom. And he doesn't like outsiders. He likes insiders. And so Vingerberg is within Adern. Right. So. And he's not from Nilfgaard and a total, uh, mm, uh, mm, you know, mm. asshole. Yes. 
that would be that would be one one word and and likes to you know diddle his sorceresses yep yep that one's yeah they talk about that king or prince i think he's a prince he likes to diddle his sorceresses right which uh um, yennefer is totally not into she's not cool with that no and so she's also contemplating what she wants to do with her enchantments which are how she's going to augment her appearance because whenever you uh, become a sorceress, you change your appearance um, so that you're super attractive because people take you more serious when you're super attractive, apparently. Well, um, I mean, not it, the it best does, thing, but that is help that you is, kind of achieve things in life. It's yeah, true. that is the point of the enchantments, unfortunately. So, eh. yeah. Um, and she, she doesn't know what she wants to do with them. And Istrid's like, well, you know, what do you want? And she tells him that, you know, she doesn't want to be the scared girl who stumbled into the the room through a portal she didn't even know how to conjure, mm-hmm. you know, a uh, long time ago when we first saw her. So then she's with the artist, um, contemplating like what she's gonna wear. He's showing her like basically like you know this is look at all these dresses she's enamored and stuff um he he says something about gray yes is a yes serious tone this color is serious tone but doesn't doesn't say that you're going to be uh attempting to take any power away from them or something like that you're not going to be uh intimidating them with a you know will to take on their power or so, something like that i'm wondering you see the thing that gets me to here is that like while all the dresses are obviously beautiful, it's boring. The gray right. dress is very right. boring. Well, that's, I think that's the point. I think anything. I think that I think what they're trying to they're trying to do is they're trying to curtail Yen's ambitions. Yeah, they and, see in Yennefer like ambition and a, a want to seize power, and they're trying to say like, "Hey." why don't we put you in something? Why don't we make you into something that isn't going to intimidate anybody? Yeah. And that is absolutely you know, not where she wants to go. It's not, that's not her. So <laughs> no. then Tasaya comes in, uh, tells the artist to get out. Um, and she's talking to her about how like the enchantments, like, you know, you should be happy with these because you get to remake yourself how you want on your own terms you like you know life made you the way you are now but you get a chance to say you know to change yourself to the way you want to be um and then kind of shows her an image in the mirror um of kind of like a what yennefer i guess wants to look like or something we don't get to see it Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. and then we come you know, this is a cut to Geralt part. We come back and it's the chapter talking amongst themselves. They're like in a council meeting. So there's Tasaya, we see Stregobor, we see a bunch of other mages. Um, and, and the head of the, the council is Frangilla's uncle. Yeah. Or yeah. something. He's that, he's in charge and he's Frangilla's uncle. Right. Um, which is kind of like okay this is why fringilla is pretty talented because she's probably the second most talented i think out of all of them as far as like yennefer's like class um and we know why now she's got like magic blood or something right so and this is the first time that we actually get to see the council and some of the politics at play between yeah. all the sorcerers yeah so they're talking about different politics and stuff um and basically stregobor because he's a complete a hole comes around to uh because right. they're talking about who they should send to Nilfgaard because they're de- i don't think i think uncle guy doesn't want fringilla to have to go to Nilfgaard, obviously because he has like personal attachments you know this is his niece and he doesn't want her to be sent to a prince that's going to diddle her um right and they also think so shagabor comes up saying like what about yennefer she'd be a good fit for nilfgaard mm-hmm. um and she'd be a terrible fit for adern because in adern they hate elves right and that Especially, was the like whoa moment like how did you know that Ooh. and and we knew from the previous episode that istrid told uh stregobor about yennefer being of elven blood so um the council's all like shocked about it and they're like well we can't send yennefer to adern anymore they're gonna 
they're going to hate her if they find out. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're like, okay, well, in that case, we'll send Frangilla to Adern and we'll send Yennefer to Nilfgaard. Um, and Tasai is trying to like fight back against this, but she gets outvoted easily. Um, so we cut to, uh, I I can't remember exactly the situation there, but Yennefer finds out that she's set to go to Nilfgaard now and nobody told her. And she's like, wait, what? I don't, Oh, it was the artist. The artist was handing her a red dress. He was like, this is what this prince likes, not the gray dress. Right, right. So here you and, go. And then she was like, she busts into the office and she's like, I thought you were in charge of where we were, you were assigning us. And she's like, yeah, but the council. And she was like, and oh no, she's like, uh, yes, I am. And now you're going to Nilfgaard. She's like, I think you got outvoted by the council because the Yennefer is clever enough to figure out what's going on. And yeah. She was Tessiah right. Tessiah tells her, mm-hmm. you know, it, they found out that you were of elven blood. And Yennefer is, well, why would you tell them that? And she's because like, Tessiah I was the them. one that knew. Right. And she was like, yeah, I didn't then tell them. Yennefer put two and two together and was like, Istrid. Istrid did this. And um, then he, she calls him out and is like, you've been spying. And then he's like, and you haven't? You were also <laughs> spying. And like, then they were like, like, you were high and mighty. And then they were like, you were, couples couples argument or they have then, an argument yeah. um istrid you know he's trying because istrid's like really in love with yennefer this is like a thing yeah um, yeah and, in and, the and books he's also really in love with her we only get one chapter with istrid but it's very obvious that he's very much in love with her which is um, which is actually really cool because he he falls in love with her even when she's not attractive physically like yeah when she when she's like hunchbacked still and her face is messed up and like like he from the beginning finds her to be more than just this you know broken girl he finds her to be something that's worth loving and it's unfortunate that she doesn't like i mean for a short time she returns that but her ambitions like yeah yeah her ambitions are greater than that and yeah so she he basically he's trying to like keep it together he's trying to like calm her down and he's like look none of this matters anyways you know come with me after like you know we'll you can stay with me uh you don't even have to go to court you don't got to worry about this stuff anyways you won't have to go to Nilfgaard Mm -hmm. and she basically says you know like you know you'll get to you'll spend your days wiping off dusty old bones and I'll spend my days you know, emptying the dustpan. It that doesn't sound like life. That sounds like slow suicide. Right. And um, she's like, that's not that's not the future that I want. That's not what she wants. She wants right. power. She wants like the court life. She wants the recognition. Mm-hmm. Um and so it's like obvious like, you know, this isn't gonna work. You ruined this for me. Um and as she's leaving, she's like storming out, she's leaving and he he says that she's only angry because she lost her chance to be beautiful. He like yells it at her Which as she's like, leaving. That's such a stupid thing to it say. It's like, dude, if you wanted her oh. to stick around, you said the worst thing right. you could possibly say. Because not only does that like, ba- like just shove it in her face again, you're also implying that she wasn't beautiful already. To, to him. Which, yeah. Which and it's like, probably wasn't true. Yeah, you were in love with her. Like, what do you? She is beautiful. You should tell her that. But right. he says uh, it's it's real bad. Um, so she's you know she just kind of stares back at him and leaves. Um, and we cut to like the party. They're in a ballroom. There's dancing and stuff going on. Frangilla's dancing with the king of a- Adern. Mm-hmm. He's not impressed. He's like, you know, I a local would do better. I don't, and he's, he's not happy with, with Frangilla. It cuts back to Yennefer. She storms into the artist room and is, you know, basically telling him like, do the enchantments. And he's like, you know, the, the, uh, Bannard would have my hide. And <laughs> I'm not going to repeat the next slide. <laughs> yeah. but basically saying that he's, she you know, emasculates him basically. Yeah. Yeah. So he does them. Uh, he tells her the cost of beauty, uh, is not being able to, procreate anymore yeah basically so, takes out her ovaries yeah 
Because he's like completely cuts out her uterus, right? Or yeah, something. it's like it's, it's like, like it's like yeah, all the all the lady parts that would ever be used for making babies just all gone. They're all gone. So yeah. then we get this really intense scene of like he like basically draws lines on her um, to like mark how he's going to do the enchantments, and it, then it goes through this really like gruesome scene of like her back shifting into mm -hmm. into shape and she's like covered in blood right um right it's she's screaming in intense pain and meanwhile this is also being like cut in with the striga fight yeah so like just the striga is screaming yes. at Geralt's and it's intense fights and stuff and yennefer is screaming in pain as her body morphs um it's it's really intense and finally we lets off with like this really loud scream she like arches up in the air and collapses and she wakes up kind of like on the stone floor her body changed and we cut back into the the ballroom and we see like kind of people the important people there kind of notice something's off here mm -hmm. something doesn't feel right and everyone kind of looks at the door they kind of sense Yenna it they can sense yeah. it it's so cool yeah and yennefer yennefer storms in body changed into like this you know into this perfect form she She's strides got, like, in the like in slow motion like it's a hair commercial Oh yeah. yeah her like, hair is like straight and like, <laughs> like it, even her hair was fixed. Yeah. Like her hair didn't look yeah. like that before. It's like this is really well done. Everything's straightened now. She's got like intense, like shadowy makeup on her eyes oh, and yeah. stuff that oh, really yeah. bring out the purple because her eyes are purple. Yeah. She really her, brings it she out kept her eyes and the cuts on her wrists. And this is, I, it looks mostly black. I'm assuming this is the start of her black and white attire, mm -hmm. um, but she's wearing this like really like a beautiful black dress. She just looks like this like terrifying, smoky, like beautiful it's a power dream walking it's, in. It's yeah, a power it's, suit. Yeah, it's super strong. And everyone's looking at her. She walks straight up to the king of Adern and is like, you know, hi, I'm Yennefer Vingerberg. And Let me like, just make sure oh. to be a hundred percent sure that you know that I'm from Vingerberg because you want a local. Right. And he is, he is, he's immediately enamored. Josiah is trying to run like, um, interference on this and it, it's too late. She's Doesn't already work. made her impression on him. He's already enamored. He wants her she's she's completely changed this so um, they do their little funny uh royalty dance thing in the middle of the room we get to see those old patterns from up above as the couples dance and they're right in the center and the camera pans away end scene yeah can we just like give an award to anya shalatra because like damn yeah. dude yeah she like this is like i feel like i've never heard of her before this show but honestly she's like top tier yeah top tier. like she knows it, how to play the attitude and everything it's great she, she throws so, like 100 percent into every scene and it's oh yeah. it's amazing it's just so good um and so the last part of the episode this is after the Geralt talking with tris and she's telling him about his destiny and then it cuts to siri who's asleep on the you know frozen ground and she kind of gets like this in this trance and is just walking towards this forest um, slowly. And Dara is trying to chase after her, like, no, don't yeah. go in there. Oh, He's getting shot at by arrows. I know. And then he keeps um, running. He like, keeps going. Ugh. And then he just gets hit and is down. Um and so we're not entirely sure if he's dead or not in this situation. Like we just see he gets hit by an arrow and he just, mm -hmm. he just slumps to the ground. Yep. Um, she and just kind of wanders Siri off. He continues to walk into the, the forest. A little zombie Siri um, just wandering off so, into the forest. And that's it. That's the last thing we see in the episode. That's it. Well, man, good episode. Lots of big important stuff happens here. And uh, oh, yeah. we're going to move on next week with episodes four and five. And then the week after that, we'll be back with our patrons. So look mm -hmm. forward to that as well. Toasty, this has been super fun. Do you have anything else going on you want to share before we head out? Uh, same stuff. Uh, follow the Witcher Lorecast on Twitter. Um, and go listen to uh, Avatar Legends Journey of the Elements if you want to hear more of my firebending 
firebending. Yep. I do that often firebend all the time. Um, mm-hmm. we're on the, we, they just released episode four yesterday. So, um, already, already getting a few in there. So if yeah. avatar interests you at all, and other than that, uh, I don't have anything else. Okay, man. I think. <laughs> cool. Cool. Well, we've got all the other shows on the Robots Radio Network at robotsradio.net, including all of my other lore casts. So if you're into Fallout or Elder Scrolls or Mass Effect or Starfield, which is coming out, we've got a new Starfield lore cast episode up with all the latest news because we got some new new news. And we're going to start doing more of those episodes more regularly now as we're getting more and more news coming up on the new year. Uh, we're exactly just past a year out from launch so we should be getting more and more news updates on starfield which is going to be a huge game that game's going to be amazing and um i'm putting up some new videos on the robots radio youtube mostly about skyrim because i jumped back into the skyrim anniversary edition which i've been streaming every morning over on the robots radio youtube and we've been having a lot of fun with that so come join me in the mornings. I put out a new mod video for my members, my YouTube members, which will go out for everybody tomorrow with some of the latest mods, some of the new ones that you should check out if you're modding Skyrim. And uh, just been hanging out with my with my buddies over there playing some Skyrim uh, Extreme Roleplay Edition, where we uh, are roleplaying our character, which means that, you know, the stream gets to decide, decide what personality quirks my character has. Right now, my character is oh, deeply cool. terrified of chickens. And also Amazing. a kleptomaniac, um, like 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 run away anytime you see a chicken. Oh yeah, oh yeah. If I see a chicken, them. I have to know. I have to run away. Like a f- very afraid of. Ch- I cannot. I cannot walk past a chicken. I run away. Okay. From them. Okay. So now you need a ge- now you need a mod that turns all dragons into giant. <laughs> you have to run away from dragon chickens. <laughs> Terrified. Giant um, dragon chickens. That would be giant amazing. dragon chickens. Um, for 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 those of y'all that might like like. Uh, tabletop games and stuff um our our friends over at uh roll to cast are going to be starting their um witcher tabletop yeah. rpg play uh, uh or season so next season they're doing witcher yes um so anyone that's interested in that that's yeah. i'm going to be listening to that as if, i already listened to them regularly but as if i needed another reason to listen <laughs> to them but obviously i'm very excited for the witcher part stuff, yeah so very very entertaining stuff i've actually been chatting with them about possibly coming over here and chatting about one of the episodes with us so we'll see if that works out sometime soon as well mm-hmm. maybe they can jump in and, and chime in about one of these episodes before season two so uh yeah, that stuff could be coming down down the pipe, Pike. Either one of those. Different people say different things. Which one do you say, Tosi? Um, I don't think I've ever said that term that's, ever. That's a phrase. Life, that's so. a phrase people say. I know it's a phrase. Yeah. I've never heard Pike. That's for sure. People say it. People um, say it both ways, and I think both are actually correct. I think. I think here. I think Pike is probably better because you know, you know. I don't think they have pipes. Maybe they do. Who knows? Smoking a big old, big old park. All right. Well, thanks for hanging out, everybody. We'll be back next week. And until then, Toasty. Stay safe on the path. All right. See you guys later. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to the Witcher Lorecast. We'd love to hear about your experiences with the games and the books and the TV series and all your thoughts on everything. Please check out the Robots Radio Discord and follow us on Twitter at Witcher Lorecast. You've been listening to a Robots Radio podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net.